Final speaker of the day is Mohammed Qasim, who is the uh, CTO of eFabulous. So uh, thanks for uh, joining us and uh, apologize for the uh, delay in time here, but looking forward to your talk. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, let me, I'm going to, I think I can still share the screen. Uh, oh, oh, I'm not allowed to share the screen. Try yep. now. Just okay. got yep. it. it works now. Yep. Okay, good. Apologies. Okay. Um, do, you, uh, do you see my screen? Yes. I can. Oh, you can see my screen. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so my my name is Mohammed Qasim. I'm gonna. Uh, uh, I'm just, Co-founder and CTO of Efabless. I'm I'm going to um, first on uh, elaborate on the name of the title, the title of the presentation because some of uh, you have seen some of the links or the uh, posts that were asking what is Caravel, but um, Efabless is, um, in, in, is is uh, doing all the engineering related to the infrastructure and the uh, simplification working with uh, Google on the programs for the open source uh, chip design. So that's my back. My background is hardcore electronics and chip design for devices that already that now no longer exist except on eBay as used devices, because I have left you know that world uh, probably uh, twelve years ago to start the company. So I used to work at Texas Instruments. I was uh, an, an an analog mixed signal designer, designing all the analog on chips like OMAP. Um, yeah, you know, pick anything outside the digital uh, infrastructure I, that would be. I was responsible for it. Um, initially, I was uh, responsible for one of them, and then uh, I had a great team of uh, engineers that we uh, worked on the rest of it uh, as we go forward. Before I leave the I, I also and this picture you've probably seen it before. Um, um, I, I I do buy things. To understand where they are and how they're designed, and of course, you know, probably I'll, I'll, many of you will be doing that. So, I'm, a little bit about you know the context of the why um, you know the, the, we're doing what we're doing. So, um, especially for example, within the Chips Alliance, um, at the end of the day, what we want to do, we need to get to a position where we have. Um, open source chip design that is available in a way that is commercially usable, similar to what Linux has arrived to. And in order to do that, um, there is a, it, there's a lot, a lot of steps. But when you do that, think about it in the hardware perspective, you're going to, you're, you're, you're targeting devices like what I have here. So imagine, you know, we, there are many, many, many devices. Typically these things happen with larger companies or larger companies that have capital. Um, and uh, the, the we want to convert that into some sort of a process that allows a low volume uh, product to have. Now, if you look at this picture, of translation is that on the left is the smartphone, unlimited or maybe hundreds of millions of units, um, uh, or for one chip, or you know, or derivatives. And then on the right hand side, the orange, a lot of applications that don't require. Um, and, or don't say, exist for larger volume because of just the market is niche, but they need customization. They need to uh, to connect. Uh, to, I'm sorry to optimize the the, the the compute and power to these applications versus having a standard. Product. Typically, historically, this hasn't happened because and it, the it was very expensive to think about customization for uh, a small or low volume product. So, the, you know, in order to get there, we need more custom ASICs for low volume devices. And 
who's going to design them? There's uh, um, a typo here, that's an S. So we need to see a lot more designers to be able to, uh, uh, to achieve that and actually go with the future. So the process of chip design needs to be simplified in a way that you're, it, you know, I think um, being a hardcore semiconductor uh, person, I don't think we're going to achieve a thousand X by teaching everybody to, to become an expert in IC design. And things have never worked that way in the past in anything. You simplify um, the process, make it available so you can, including driving cars or the app, uh, app, app stores, what they did is that they simplified the process to make a new software product and put it in the marketplace. So to start with, what is Caravel? The name was coming from, uh, first of all, in the, in the, it was chosen by my colleague Tim Edwards uh, from Evablis, and it, it means what it means. And it's a, it's a you know, 15th century ship um, <clears throat> with a certain size. And in this case, it's called a carrier chip, and that that where Caravel came. But it is actually um, a chip as a that is a part of a platform that makes a designer start from the 15th floor to reach 20, rather than uh, uh, starting to build a chip from scratch. So, if you look here, so for example, in in gen general designs versus how highly customized for a specific application uh, like uh, low leakage or so. IOs on the chip and the packaging are just are just a um, uh, just necessary evil. You need to protect the chip from ESD, you need to mechanically protect the chip, but the actual design could be that um, um, a part that you would be that the part in the middle here. So the way it was designed is to leave them 10 millimeter squares in the, in the middle and then uh, the designer would focus on what's building, what's in the middle. And then we have an automatic approach just to integrate it, and then it goes to the fab, and then you get boards rather than <coughs> parts. So it makes it easy uh, to actually test it. And this board is USB pluggable, and you can run it right away. Uh, the Caravel SOC is actually um, a, a risk five microcontroller with, with a few, you know, with, it's not a super microcontroller, but it is, it has a, a, a little bit of RAM, it has a little peripheral, and it, it has fully controlled uh, you know, uh, IOs. Uh, one of the things we do, and we've done in the past, is that it, the, the, the RISC-V core that was actually here inside the, this area of Caravel was, it was a PCOR V32. Now we have two flavors uh, uh, between eFabless and, and, uh, and the, the Google program. We also actually, we're going to have another flavor, but it's not necessarily open source, but it's going to be based on ARM. So there are multiple uh, flavors that can ha we can change that and work with. Uh, it's the node, it's actually a node to say, I don't have a slide for it, but it's this area of the chip was built uh, using uh, Amaranth and Litex, and it has been uh, it basically started from a Python hardware description. And we adapted the Litex framework to uh, target, you know, in addition to FPGAs to target uh, Sky 130 uh, and GF1. Now this chip is available in two two process technologies: uh, Sky Skywater 130 nanometer open source PDK and Global Power uh, 180 nanometer MCU. It's an open PDK as well. The open source PDK. The um, um, the flavor, the, the the global foundries version is slightly different, slightly smaller uh, in terms of the side the area here, but it's still uh, I think greater than nine millimeter squares, and I and, and I will will eventually provide pictures that are actually or uh, more information on that. But the shuttle for global foundries has been out, and many designs exist. So if you look at the zoom out and look at the whole cycle, this is just a repeat. But a big part of the project was to actually enable a tooling and open source tools and EDA to allow uh, you to not to have any uh, showstoppers in order to start designing. And that actually, you can start doing this process at zero cost until you get to manufacturing. Um, and you can uh, start a digital design or analog design. And uh, they're different because the Caravel chip 
we have two different versions of it. One of them is an analog version, or a digital version with Caravel, and the analog version is called Caravan. And then you, you, you can find it on the repo, uh, uh, the parallel repo, on efab, github.com slash efabless. So we, efabless, also we have a, an offering that is uh, for startups and universities and other systems that not necessarily want to open source their 10 millimeters. They use an open source chip. So we have a, chip, a product called Chip Ignite. We're offering multiple options in it. It's not a part of the Google program, like some people ask for, for that. It's not a part of the Google program yet. Our, and, and it's being discussed whether it's going to be there or not. But, but these are, Caravel has become uh, a platform that you can do many things, um, including uh, just you know not using some of the resources. So it is intended to enable the learning uh, innovation cycle, which is you, you design something, you, you test it, you learn it, and then repeat. The thing is, in the chip world, this is expensive. It's actually not cheap. So in order to make it cheap, the Google, uh, you know, is a part of, is, a, is the, the driver of an open MPW program, funding it completely. And basically, it's very simple. If the design is open source, you don't pay for it, uh, for the manufacturing. Design open source, you don't pay for manufacturing. That's actually a program that has been uh, 2021, 22, and uh, it's ongoing in 23. And uh, uh, th thanks to all the team in Google to actually work with us and the community to make that happen. One of the things that have happened also is that we started in, 19, in 2022, uh, 2020 rather, uh, with the Sky 130 uh, process. Um, now, a, over time, and because of the success and the number of designs that were generated on the Sky 130, a, a other foundries, including a major foundry like Global Foundries, saw the, the value in opening another process with allowing the community to design on it. It's a very simple business proposition. The more designers using your process, the more likely you will hit a home run. It's the statistical problem. You just, you know, it, you know, you just hit the, the more the more designers, more users, more likely to have a home, uh, uh, business. So. That was demonstrated on the Skywater, and then at the in the third one in 2023, they, uh, you may have seen an announcement coming from the U.S. government actually to fund the third program, which is uh, it's an open source uh, 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 open MBW program built on an infrastructure funded by the government uh, for Sky 130, and this process is a different process from. The ones on the left, that's a fully depleted SOI, which has unique properties for uh, leakage and uh, analog design. All of that, no NDA, and you can go uh, to this link to actually find it or clone it uh, recursively, and you will get everything. So that's a description, more detailed description to, of the Google program. Um, you know, the users would get five boards and, and 300 CSP parts. Everything needs to be under open source license. And one of the things that we're trying to drive with, we're trying to raise the quality of the designs. How the quality here doesn't mean uh, a design that has a better function. It's a design that is um, working to a certain spec that is defined by the designer and fully reproducible by other people. The reason we do that is that we want, uh, instead of having a pile of GDSs or layouts or code, we would want a full structure that other people can learn from, and and that's how people learn. That's how you know you you want something to download it. The first thing you want to do is run it. If it works, you start modifying. It. And it's not limited to chip designers. Most of the designers that we've seen are coming from uh, adjacent backgrounds. A key metric for this, and I, I stole that text, uh, but I added to it from Tim Ansel. Um, so it's to actually have the number of users and contributors to everything that is in the ecosystem of chip design. So, and I say users, gee, a user could be somebody who downloads something, but it's also, uh, if the project is actually, people invest the time to contribute into it, that's actually a commitment. That actually means that it has been so valuable to someone that they believe that they can use it, not only use it, but also add uh, their own contribution of, uh, 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 you know, either 
finding issues or uh, addition, fixing issues or additional development. So these are metrics that, that are very important. And because we're doing this project that is completely new, uh, it is important to keep that in, on, in sight as we move forward. So now, uh, this was a much lower number last year. And so we have, uh, as of today, we have 4,700 member plus uh, on the Slack community, which you can go sign up to it. And you you can go, just when you click on this, you're gonna go to the, uh, you're gonna get the, uh, the, the, the website that you can put your email in there and you will get a, uh, a, uh, an invite for the uh, uh, the Slack community. And it has many channel, channels and it, everything is open there. And that's the beauty of open source uh, PDK and the science. So some numbers that are, are kind of new. So this is the number of projects is increasing over time. Um, and the also there's also, I, I don't have the MPW7 here, but again, um, seven is oversubscribed. And then we have, um, uh, other projects are coming from the uh, the the GF one eighty. It, it's worth mentioning that the GF one eighty deadline was on December fifth. Uh, uh, we had that about twenty participants over forty uh, slots available. Or uh, it, um, it 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 was uh, uh, over the weekend. It ended up with uh, ninety, and and uh, of which about 70 completely clean ready to tape out and the lottery had to be in enacted of course to because we don't want to have to bias any selection based on judgment of, uh, of someone as long as it's manufacturable this is how innovation actually works on the other side everything is going in the right direction in terms of you know the pdk download one important thing that happened over that last two weeks if you look at the data on the bottom for open lane, which is the flow that's being used for digital design generating the RTL to GDS. In the last two weeks, five, almost 5,000 unique cloners. This is not a person that who's downloading twice or this is unique for open lane. I don't have the data for the PDK yet, but it is actually, it says something that within uh, the, the last two weeks, you had that number of unique cloners of the PDK which is very impressive in terms of uh, of the open lane i'm sorry because open lane is actually a common flow that's being used for both the gf 180 uh, mcu and the sky 130. um uh, again this picture probably seen it before but it's a representation of uh, two shuttles this is how they get distributed and made available to the foundry um some of the examples that are on the shuttles are uh, very uh, creative and uh, good ideas can see them. I mentioned earlier that the, because of the simplification of the entire process, more designers are getting in, which is an important way or a validation also for the simplification. We do need more, so it's not we're not um, in a way to we uh, we want to have the ability. If you can code, you can make your own chip and also optimize it with your software. MPW two came as well. Now, and the, the, this is new material here looking at them. This is actually the shuttle MPW2, but um, uh, I have put the, also, although since the, the form factor looks different, but it is really, the, this is a, the, a, the, the array of the parts all loaded on a, 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 a breakout board for the board that we have. We, um, one of the things we did in MPW2 we actually added to our characterization a temperature forcing station. This is at home, so and it's a little bit noisy, but it, it's really great. And uh, with a test setup that you can actually be recommended to the community for others without the temperature aspect of it, um, you can replicate it. We uh, we this is the latest board for MPW to MPW per Caravel period actually for any MPW. <laughs> So on the top left, that's the Caravelle board. And if you can, you can see here that we use the flexi pins uh, for the purpose of making it easy to pop the part and put it back in. And um, the if you get 300 parts, you can actually do that. And the other thing is that um, this board was created with a dual mode. One of them is a hat, has a 
bolt into the board, the SD board that is in the bottom here, which is the nuclear board um, F746 as a tester. So versus you can put them together and you can use that as a uh, as a tester or you can just put it standalone and plug it into the USB and you can utilize the IOs. Why did we do that? This was a story that I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm not putting enough details in it here, but basically we there was a, a timing bug in MPW2 and 3 and we found a software solution that depends on the chip itself and the data type. So whether it's a data, a data independent, a data independent type of timing issue. So we understood that there is a model that you can do and a set of trials that you can try in the code to arrive to how oh, that chip can I, can I can use this chip and correct or distort the software side to have a correct hardware uh, activation. So, but we don't want to make it that complex process in the hands of the user because it's too much and, and it's actually, you know, it is too much even for an expert user. So this nuclear board does two jobs. One of them is to, when you put the board on it, it will actually find out, characterize the chip. It will characterize the chip from a functional perspective and then find out the timing issue uh, and what how, and what algorithm was used to uh, uh, solve the timing by uh, from the software side and it will apply it and uh, uh, tell you you know the chip is good and you can use it in as as transparently you don't have to use the continue to use the test board you you can once you find out the 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 the, the 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 set of values that you need to use for that chip it happens okay. this timing issue is a chip by chip so if you have 300 parts you would want to have a system like this to actually put it in it will immediately within seconds tell you um the, the part is uh, working and we can and, and gives you the values of the software programming that you can actually add to make it completely smooth one of the things that uh jumping ahead this slide is i wanted to say that it's actually old and the reason i bring it up here is that a lot of the stuff that's happened here is it is, is uh it was was predicted i didn't have global foundries here but i had a next foundry here and this is something that you know we projected together with tim ansel that this is going to happen and it happens and there's more and more coming but it is important to highlight that if we're going to go talk about these applications and solve real problems in the world, um, around the world, with open source IP or, or blocks, we need to continue to do uh, to look at the picture and see what what solutions I would actually add a top level here for actual applications. But we've been some move, doing some movement here. One of the very important things that we need to accelerate and drive forward is to add more projects. So some of the projects that um, there's about one, almost 800 total projects that are uh, open source now. Uh, not all of them got put on the tape out because it had to be selected. If you can, if you go to efabs.com slash projects, uh, you'll see a lot of them. But these are a couple of examples of a few projects and how great the, 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 the topics are and the diversity of true, you know, the size and, and areas of design. Now, these are, you know, I'm going to show just a few creative aspects here. Now, our friend uh, uh, Tim, I'm sorry, Matt Ben has created the concept of tiny tape out, which actually does the, it takes the 10 millimeter square divided into uh, 500 uh, pieces with a small editor that actually do it. And that actually is an interesting experiment when it happened because it shows there are people that are interested in doing that and, um, and actually have 100 by 100, uh, 100 square uh, 100 uh, millimeters square millimeters um, in as a part of the uh, 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 the chip and these are all addressable um, from from the chip so when Matt gets the the board and they can actually get it funded without Google so this is actually this is how, how we get positioned so it's a, it showed a lot of interest from the, the, the youngest person that got on that uh, or designed the design that was nine years old. We other examples of the people who did designs IEEE. They have a program, full program for a, um, the uh, so-called the IEEE Peak program. Uh, it's a competition. 
So the Carabel is used for multiple projects, as you can see together. This year, there's another one uh, that is, looks like that, except that the, the, the layouts are not are about to be finished. I mean, look at the diversity of designs and these, you know, how how the what was this is the, the 22 that were selected for uh, moving forward, and and that actually is is in, is great because it shows that we're not only not have a digital, we also have an analog, and we're started to thinking about enriching the library of available for open source blocks for everyone. Some of the silicon that came back um, and, and some, it, you know, depends on some of it, uh, um, you know, even though we had some bugs and issues, the people were able to uh, make it work. This one, the, the left ones were from NPW1 and the right one from Chip Ignite, which is the offering that ECAB does uh, for university and startup. And um, you can see this one here is a, is a uh, buck converter and um, this is Jiba converter, and it's available also uh, online. And these are some of the uh, things that were done between Matt Ben and uh, and uh, uh, TNT or, or Sylvain. It shows again the diversity of uh, how people connect together and do things together that otherwise wouldn't have been possible. Matt Ben has created a whole course um, to that. Uh, gets the, a, uh, a person from a zero to making a small list. Uh, very uh, good work. Um, and other examples, I'm just going to flash through them. You know, this was Andrew Zinnerberg from, from the very first chip for the test chip for the RAM. Now, what we need to make Caravel as a platform richer for the open source, and we need open source blocks that are actually available to serve that these products and solve real human needed problems. As I said, um, you know, it takes a village, so it takes a community, a journey with the community. And what we're doing here is uh, disrupting really uh, uh, a stale industry, uh, the methodologies and the approach to developing chips or hardware hasn't really changed much in a, in a significant delta a step function for, uh, for, for, for at least you know, a few decades. Um, so the we need to get into that library and start thinking about how do what do we need and to serve the application sensor interfaces data converters communication there's a bluetooth device that is being done by university of michigan uh, we need this library to start getting into uh, building useful chips and a useful chip is something that you can actually put it in a watch or put it in a water filter or water uh, monitor a smoke detector these are things that we need to, to think about to take this entire initiative, uh, you know, a couple of levels up. One of the things that you can do also then in, um, on the, uh, that, that is possible is actually you can, if you don't get the funding from Google because some uh, community members were concerned or not concerned, did not have that option because they didn't get on the lottery ticket, they can submit for the next shuttle, but they needed to control some of the, some of the time. So again, it takes a village, but in, the, in this way, uh, crowdfunding. So um, we tried a couple of examples. Uh, one on our side is called Clear, and that was an embedded FPGA inside uh, uh, Caravel, and uh, it was funded and it's in uh, manufacturing now. Uh, but, and then we have another example on crowd supply that uh, 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 it's called Maverick that is done by an, another team that is using Caravel for uh, FT8 uh, receiver. Anyway, that, that's what all I have for now. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to, I wish I'd had more uh, opportunity to add more details, but uh, I will leave it for questions if there are questions. No, that's great. Thanks so much, Mohammed. So uh, we have time for a question or two, and then uh, we do need to get to our board meeting. So. Take the microphone on the back here. I think that might be the youngest uh, person to ever tape out ever at nine years old. Hi, uh, uh, this is really cool. I was wondering if there's any plans for a uh, larger than 10 millimeter squared um, area for open source projects? So uh, let me, I'll, I'll just share the screen real quick to visual. It's already shared, it's still shared, right? It's still shared. 
Okay. So, so um, we are looking at things, more things, but this is something with, for the Google shuttle. Um, we, we obviously it's Google funded, so Google has to have you know, a lot of say in it. But we're considering the main thing in getting the cost down and make it possible and easy is to actually get into that tile size. So there is a consideration. It's literally an idea on a napkin. We haven't uh, put it yet, is to maybe have a, a double area, double wide, double height, or double or quad. Okay. Um, the reason we don't do this right away because we don't do, we don't have a tape out team. This is done by a machine. Okay. It gets organized, it gets flushed, it gets into the foundry. So if we're going to do um, four, that's an, uh, that's an outlier in the process, in the automation process. So it, 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 it's not a just about removing a couple layouts and putting a bigger one, because we don't do that. We want to be able to do that for hundreds and, of shuttles, and, and, you know, or maybe thousands of shuttles. And uh, we can't just move the layout. But is there a plan? not on the schedule is there a consideration based on what we see from the community yes thank you other questions hang on hi mohammed uh, this is dave kellett so uh, you, you had the the easier design path and the expert design path so on the easier design path what can i do with your capability here that I can't do with a small FPGA? Uh, I, just to be, are you referring to the two types of uh, designs like here? Like the one that I used the... Um, uh, you you up showed here? one where I could go into expert mode, use the whole frame. I'm talking about the, the kind of the yeah, top, yeah. the top row. Yes. Oh well, the top row you can do it in FPGA. That's why there's an FPGA prototype here. <laughs> so uh, here's the thing: the choice between an ASIC and an FPGA is a complex choice. It's not just because it's cool. It has to be economically. And like I, I'm involved, I was involved in making chips for the smartphones for the first time, uh, a TI. And the main questions were: there are no chips that actually do anything that the phone wants. The application processor didn't exist so it would it had to be low power because and it had to support gaming later so you have to build a custom chip so the choice if you can do it an apga for a product and it's unique and, and you can sell that product uh, uh, profitably and uh, make it viable then why do an easy but people do an ASIC for uh, potentially form factor, right? Instead of form factor reduction or power, maybe uh, cost in most of the cases when you have a really high volume, and then IP protection, where you can actually just deliver a solution and, and, and do it in. So I think I answered, but I, you know, but also I feel that I that I danced around the question. But, yeah, but I started saying you can get on the PGA. Thanks. One one more benefit here, if I mind, if I don't, if you don't mind. Once you have a library of analog IP that actually can work with you here, that analog set of, uh, set of analog resources may not be available on the FPGA that you're using. All right, one final question. Hey, this should be an easy one. Uh, do you have a basically like a top 10 uh, of your wish list for uh, IP blocks that you need for the PDK? And oh, if so yes. where is that published? Uh, I started, uh, I, both actually, uh, Tim Anson and I started some, but we have, I have a, a list of the IP, existing IP, and I have a list of wanted IP on a GitHub repo. I want to publish it to make it a public repository. Now, that's my fault. But now that I made a call to action, I'd like to do that. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Thank you. All right. Well, with that, I think we'll wrap it up for uh, today. So, Mohammed, thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your time, everyone.
And thank you everyone for attending today and uh, hanging in there with us. I know we ran way over time today, but all the talks were very good. So uh, thank you and uh, we're signing off here from uh, Sunnyvale. Thanks everyone.